Holy smokes, this thing is heavy. Okay, so hear me out. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you shoved, I don't know, say a 3 horsepower motor on the back of a mini lathe? Well, wonder no more, because I've just gone out and bought a 3 horsepower motor. And I know I've done a lot in the past with regards to making it a bit more rigid, but I give this a 50-50 chance of the headstock just snapping off. For context, 3 horsepower is 6 times the power that the lathe came with. Now the topic of how I actually powered this lathe is something that's come up a lot in the past. From the factory it comes with a 350 watt DC motor and that's connected through a gearbox to the spindle. And really 350 watts is not all that powerful. Now the only reason why I ended up replacing that motor was because the DC motor board blew and for whatever reason the price to replace those boards was almost 300 bucks. That's almost half the cost of a brand new mini lathe. So instead of replacing it, I simply pulled apart my jaw press and connected the AC motor to my lathe, direct drive to the spindle using a pulley. It also had the added benefit of just being more powerful than the old motor. Now that worked until the end of last year when that motor burnt out and I simply replaced it with another jaw press motor, which is what I currently have here bolted to the back of the lathe. For whatever reason, it just ended up being a lot cheaper to buy a whole jaw press, rip the motor off and then attach that motor, than it was to simply go out and buy a motor by itself. Now in general, I do like this setup, simply because it was a simple fix, these motors are quite simple, and these single phase AC motors are quite powerful. The big downside to using these motors is the fact that they're fixed speed. The motor spins at 1400 RPM and there's not a huge amount that I could do about that. I could vary the RPM slightly by moving around the belt to step it up and step it down, but the lowest speed I could get on the lathe was about 6 or 700 RPM. I could never really cut anything at a reasonable speed and I ended up burning up a lot of tooling because I was just spinning the lathe way too fast. In fact, that's the main reason why I tend to use carbide tooling. It's a lot more difficult to burn it up compared to high speed steel, and it just seemed to work a lot better with this setup. And that brings us back to the 3 horsepower motor. Not only is it 3 horsepower, but it's also made to work with 3 phase AC power. That means we should be able to use a VFD to control the speed. Plus, since I don't have three-phase power in this workshop, I was going to use a VFD anyway to convert the single phase to three-phase, so it's a win-win overall. Tell you what, this motor is a lot bigger than I was expecting. I also cannot stress enough just how crazy this upgrade is. Most big lathes that I've used only have about 1.5 to 2 horsepower, and in fact this is probably going to be the most powerful lathe that I've ever used. In fact, just looking online, these big $10,000 lathes only come with 2 horsepower. Although in fairness, those lathes are geared, this one won't be. And if you're wondering why I chose to go with 3 horsepower compared to 2, well, it was the same price as a 2 horsepower, and 3 is bigger than 2. Well, that looks to be our connection terminal for our 3 phase power. Okay, so before I bolt the motor on, there's a few things that I want to do to make sure I don't break the lathe. So the first thing I want to do is just bolt the lathe down to something a bit more rigid. I've gone ahead and bought a piece of 20mm thick plate which should do the job. I'll cut it down to size and then drill holes for the mounting bolts.
I'll also need a hole for that bolt that holds that piece of steel bar that I put underneath the headstock. I'll then bolt it back down and I'll reuse the old mounting plates on the bottom side. And that feels a lot better. I'm sure it will make a huge difference. The next thing I need to do is machine a set of pulleys for the new drive belts. I'm still using V-belts, but these ones will be bigger than the old ones. I know there's other styles of belts that I could have used, but I prefer to use these belts for several reasons. One, they're easy to buy and they're easy to make the pulleys for, but as well as that, if I happen to crash the lathe, which I know I am going to do at some point, I'm relying on the belts to slip, which is a better option than something else breaking. I'll set up the lathe to machine them using the old compound. Now I have to machine a groove, but the parting tool that I have is a little bit too long for the job. Thankfully I have this piece of braised carbide which should work. I haven't used braised carbide in years and the lathe isn't really suited to using braised carbide, but this piece should work. With that said though, I am having a bit of trouble. The RPM is a little bit too fast and the carbide just isn't all that well ground and I don't have any grinding wheels suited for carbide. With the first pulley now parted, I can clean it up and then get started machining on a keyway. I was going to use the carriage to act as a shaper and cut the keyway that way. I've done it several times in the past before with gears and it does seem to work just fine, but with this size keyway, it was taking too long. So instead I did it the old fashioned way, by hand, using a file. And I gotta say, that is a pretty good fit. I also machined up the other pulley to fit on the spindle. There really wasn't much material to hold onto, so I had to hold onto it using an arbor and some super glue. And once the machining was done, I can then break the bond with some propane.
I can now attach the belt and then mark out the position of the motor. I'll then cut off a piece of steel for the motor to bolt onto. I'll bolt the motor to the steel and then I'll line it up. As you can probably tell, these two pieces will be welded together and they will form a single piece that the motor and lathe will bolt onto. It just seemed like the most straightforward and simple way of doing it. And hopefully this will keep everything all aligned correctly and rigid. I'll tack everything in with the stick welder and then I'll weld everything up. Okay, so quality of welds aside, I'm pretty happy with that. Now before I do bolt it back on, there is one small thing that I want to do first. The headstock is held to the bed by three cap head screws. You would have thought that they would have used four, but for whatever reason, they didn't. So what I'll quickly do is add a fourth cap head screw myself. Not sure how much of a difference this will make, but we'll wait and see. The final thing I want to do is make a cap to retain the pulley on the spindle. For whatever reason, I forgot to do this earlier, and since I don't want to pull the new motor off the lathe at the moment, what I'll do is I'll use the mill to make it instead. The final thing left to do is get it all wired up. So what I have here is a 2.2 kilowatt VFD. The VFD will do two things. 
Firstly, it will transform the single phase AC power that I have coming into the workshop into three phase power that the motor can run on. It will also change the frequency of the electricity that is going into the motor. The motor RPM is proportional to the frequency of the power that is supplied, so lowering the frequency will lower the RPM. Now I've never used a VFD, but thankfully the instructions are pretty straightforward. Just make sure that you're careful because it does involve wiring up 240 volt power. The first thing I'll do is wire up a connection to the wall. I'll then wire up the connection to the motor. And finally, after a bit of mucking around and setting up the VFD, we thankfully have power. I'm very happy to see the lathe spinning. And it's also really nice to be able to finally change the RPM of the spindle. I haven't been able to do that in quite a few years. Nothing else left to do but see how this lathe can do. So I've chucked in a piece of mild steel and I've set it up with a brand new insert. So let's try one millimeter. One millimeter seemed to be pretty easy, which isn't much of a surprise because I could do one millimeter with the old motor. Let's try two. Okay, so two was definitely putting a bit of strain on the chuck. I might need to change out these speeds and feeds to machine it a little bit better but I definitely think it's got a lot more to give. Okay, so because I can now slow it down, I can now use reamers on the lathe. Okay, so far that's definitely an improvement and I'm really impressed. There are definitely a few things that I need to do first before I can do any heavy machining on it. The gibs and the retentioning plate need to be adjusted, so what I'll do is I'll tear it apart, readjust it, and hopefully that should make it a lot more rigid. I'll do that behind the scenes, and hopefully next week we can push this lathe to the limit. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, see you next week.